Good day to you, and welcome to Diablo. This is one of my favorite games, and I think it gets a little underappreciated nowadays because the sequel, Diablo 2, is so popular and quote-unquote improved so many things that it made this game obsolete. Some people would have it that way anyway. Oh, stop it. We already saw the intro. I, however, don't see it that way. I... The first Diablo game was such a big part of... I hesitate to say my childhood because it's such a dark game. Like, it's not exactly a game that is meant for kids to be playing, but... You know, I watched my dad play this game all the time, and it was so much by the time that I was ten. He just said, okay, fine, you can play it. So this was my first M-rated game. I've got a lot of history with it, and I love it to death. I might actually even like it better than Diablo 2 for reasons I will get into later. But right now, I just think we might as well start. Let's go ahead and play Diablo. Alright, the first thing you'll notice is that there are three different classes to choose. The warrior, the rogue, and the sorcerer. As you can probably tell, warrior is the fighter type class, starts out with a lot of strength and vitality. The rogue is the sort of archer, and the sorcerer is the magic user. Now, unlike a lot of other games of its type, there are actually no real restrictions to each class. So, like, if you wanted to play as a warrior, say, and learn a bunch of high-level spells, you can by all means do that if you level up your character properly. However, there are certain added bonuses, like the most obvious one being a warrior is much faster at attacking with a sword and a shield than the rogue or the sorcerer is. The rogue is much faster at using a bow and arrow than the war warrior and the sorcerer are, and the sorcerer is much faster and more adept at magic. That being said, as many of you know, I often tend to favor the magic users. And plus, the sorcerer is kind of overlooked in this game. A lot of people a lot of people play the warrior because that's sort of the main class of the game, and the rogue is also fairly popular, but the sorcerer kind of gets the short straw as in, in terms of not only amount of people who play it, but amount of LPs there have been with him. So, for that reason, I am going to be playing as the Sorcerer. And my name will be Kellius. Please um, ignore the frame rate. It's only on the menus. I've tested this out. The game itself runs perfectly fine, but I'm not sure what Fraps has against these menus. You gotta love this music. You really do. Alright. Here we are. In the, t in the town of Tristram. And I think in this first video I'm just gonna take the time to sort of get you introduced to, you know, sort of the town, the feel of the whole place, the residence story, backstory, what have you. It shouldn't take too long. I don't think I'll have to use more than this one part on it. Alright, in the middle of town, right by this fountain here, which is blue, which is a good thing, I'll get into that later, we've got Cain the Elder. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. So this is the way the town interface works. Um, whenever you talk to someone, you can either talk to them or have them do something in particular. Cain is an item identifier. He'll identify items for an annoyingly high price. Um, but right now we're just going to talk to him. And there is randomized gossip that each person can say. So let's just see what old Kane has to say. Griswold, a man of great action and great courage. I bet he never told you about the time he went into the labyrinth to save Wirt, did he? He knows his fair share of the dangers to be found there. But then again, so do you. He is a skilled craftsman. And if he claims to be able to help you in any way, 
You can count on his honesty and his skill. Alright, Kane's a good person to go to for quests, too, because in that talk to section, you can also, once you start getting quests, um, you can talk to anybody in the town you want about that quest, and they'll give you their little advice. Kane is the town elder, and as such, he is the wisest person in town. He's also pretty much the most important person in this game. Now, if we go over here, we've got Pepin the Healer. What ails you, my friend? And you just re say, receive healing, and he heals you instantly. I didn't need to get healed, obviously, but anyway. You can also buy healing potions. I'm just going to buy two healing potions right off the bat, because it's quite useful. Let's see what he has to say. I have made a very interesting discovery. Unlike us, the creatures in the labyrinth can heal themselves without the aid of potions or magic. If you hurt one of the monsters, make sure it is dead, or it very well may regenerate itself. All right. Just to show you how dickish this game can be sometimes. And up here we have Ogden the Tavern Owner. Uh, right now I'm just going to show you the basics of the game. I'll, I will be back to my usual charming self next time, next part, but somehow I have the feeling that a lot of my viewers may not have played this game before, so I kind of want to show you around, be a bit of a tour guide, as it were. Anyway, here's Ogden, the tavern owner. He is one of the game's main quest givers, and indeed, he will be giving us our first quest. Thank goodness you've returned. Much has changed since you lived here, my friend. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they stood, and those who took up arms were slain or, or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of our townsfolk may yet survive. Follow the path that lies between my tavern and the blacksmith's shop to find the church and save who you can. Perhaps I can tell you more if we speak again. Good luck. Alright, and I mean, that's really not a quest, per se, but it's more, he's the guy that gets you going by telling you where to go and what to do and stuff like that at the very beginning. And the last person we have in this hub is Gridswald the Blacksmith, which is who Deckard Kane mentioned. Um, he's not referred to as Deckard Kane in this game, but in the second game, his first name is revealed to be Deckard. So if I call him that, that's why. Anyway, here's so Griswold. Well, what can I do for you? You can first start by talking to me with your gossip. That lad is gonna get himself into serious trouble. Or I guess I should say, again. I've tried to interest him in working here and learning an honest trade. But he prefers the high profits of dealing in goods of dubious origin. I kinda hold that against him after what happened to him. But I do wish he would at least be careful. Now that lad he's talking about is Wirt the Pig-Legged Boy. Now Wirt is, cannot be found in the town proper. That's Jillian the barmaid. I'll go over her a little later. Um, but to find Wirt, what you do is you go sort of up here-ish. Okay, it's down here. I missed it by a little bit. But cross this bridge. Do do do. It's so one nice thing about the expansion, Hellfire, which I do have, but I don't have installed. It makes you run in town, which is kind of nice, because you do move a little slowly. Anyway, here's Wirt the Pig-Legged Boy. Psst, over here. And he's got, like, real premium items, but you have to pay 50 gold just to take a look at it, and it's often not worth it. I mean, you can get some really good stuff from him sometimes, but it's often really just not worth it. He sells things at crazy prices, and you can find things in the dungeon proper. Anyway, in the spirit of what we've been doing so far, let's hear his gossip. Ogden is a fool for staying here. I could get him out of town for a very reasonable price, but he insists on trying to make a go of it with that stupid tavern. I guess at the least he gives Jillian a place to work, and his wife Garda does make a superb shepherd's pie. Indeed. Thank you for those words of wisdom, Wirt. 
and we have to go. This area actually becomes kind of important later, but right now all it, all it serves to do is make Wirt incredibly out of the way. And it's very annoying to go see him, and that's why you won't see him very often in this LP, because I don't like him anyway. And I completely passed Julian the Barmaid, didn't I? Julian the Barmaid is up here. She will never actually give you any quests, and she's pretty much the most useless person in town. But we might as well talk to her once just to get it out of the way. Good day! How may I serve you? Why is everybody Scottish? Ogden and his wife have taken me and my grandmother into their home and have even let me earn a few gold pieces by working at the inn. I owe so much to them, and hope one day to leave this place and help them start a grand hotel in the East. Grand Hotel? Isn't that an Oscar winner from the 30s? And I, I guess that's Irish, actually, isn't it? I don't really have a good ear for Irish accents. I'm pretty good with most accents, but Irish is one of those that just confuses me. Down here is the game's funniest character, Farnham the Drunk. He's similarly useless to Jillian, like he doesn't sell you stuff like like uh, the blacksmith does or give you quests like Ogden and Kane or what have you, but he's hilarious. I'll be making quite a few visits to him, including this one. Kind of foul drinking geese? I always thought he was talking about geese when I was younger. Kane isn't what he says he is. Sure, sure. He talks a good story. Some of them are real scary, <laughs> or funny. But I think he knows more than he knows he knows. Yes. Yes, indeed. Anyway, there, and there's one more person in the town before I really get going. And that is probably who's going to be the most useful person in town for me as a sorcerer. And that is... Well, next to Pepin, who is just useful for everybody. But that is... Adria the Witch. Who is... Who barters in magical goods. I sense a soul in search of answers. And has a very over-the-top voice. Now, what have you got to say for yourself? Earth and walls and thatched canopy do not a home create. The innkeeper Ogden serves more of a purpose in this town than many understand. He provides shelter for Jillian and her matriarch, maintains what life Farnham has left to him, and provides an anchor for all who are left in the town to what Tristram once was. His tavern and the simple pleasures that can still be found there provide a glimpse of a life that the people here remember. It is that memory that continues to feed their hopes for your success. 